Hello, dear students and English language teaching specialists. Welcome to the 11th lecture of our series of the book, which is entitled The Semantic Web Trajectory in Enhancing English Language Development. This book is prepared to focus on using Web 3.0 for developing pre service English language teachers' competencies and performance based assessment. The title of this lecture is Performance-Based Assessment in Teaching English Language, Best Practices and Classification Strategies. Let's warm up our minds by answering the following questions. 1. Have you ever taken a performance-based assessment before? What was it like? 2. Why do you think performance-based assessment is important in teaching English language? 3. What are some benefits of using performance-based assessment in evaluating learners' abilities? Now let's move on to the content of the lecture. Introduction Performance-based assessment has become an essential component of modern education, particularly in teaching English language. Unlike traditional assessments, performance-based assessments provide educators with a more comprehensive and accurate picture of their students' abilities to apply their knowledge and skills in real-world situations. By using tasks, projects, or activities that simulate the actual context in which students will use their English language skills, educators can measure their performance directly and obtain valuable insights into their strengths and areas for improvement. As a result, performance-based assessments have become an effective means of evaluating English language learners' ability to communicate effectively, think critically, and collaborate with others in diverse settings. What is the definition of performance-based assessment? Hibbert et al. defined performance-based assessment as a set of strategies for the application of knowledge, skills, and work habits through the performance of tasks that are meaningful and engaging to students. This definition emphasizes the importance of meaningful and engaging tasks in the assessment process. Performance-based assessment tasks must be relevant to students' interests, experiences, and abilities to ensure that they are motivated to perform at their best. Furman described performance-based assessment as an alternative form of assessment that moves away from traditional paper and pencil tests. This definition highlights the need to move beyond standardized tests to assess students' abilities to apply their knowledge and skills in real-world contexts. Performance-based assessment provides a more comprehensive and accurate picture of learners' abilities as it measures their performance directly. Oberg defined performance-based assessment as one or more approaches for measuring student progress, skills, and achievement. This definition highlights the importance of measuring progress, skills, and achievement through performance-based tasks. Oberg also noted that performance assessment is the ultimate form of linking instruction with the assessment. This statement emphasizes the importance of aligning instruction with assessment to ensure that learners are adequately prepared for performance-based tasks. Classification of Performance-Based Assessment The first classification of performance-based assessment can be specified into two main categories which are Process-Oriented Performance-Based Assessment and Product-Oriented Performance-Based Assessment. Process-oriented performance-based assessment emphasizes the learning process and the strategies that learners use to complete a task. The focus is on the learner's approach to the task rather than just the final product. The tasks in process-oriented assessment are often open-ended and require learners to think critically, problem-solve, and collaborate with others to arrive at a solution. Feedback is provided to learners throughout the process to support their learning and development. Product-oriented performance-based assessment, on the other hand, emphasizes the final product of a task. The focus is on the quality of the final product and how well it meets the criteria set out for the task. The tasks in product-oriented assessment are often more structured and require learners to follow specific guidelines to arrive at the final product. Feedback is provided to learners on the final product, but there is less emphasis on the process of arriving at the final product. By classifying performance-based assessment into these two categories, Educators can design assessment tasks that align with their learning objectives and evaluate learners' progress more effectively. For instance, if the learning objective is to assess learners' problem-solving skills, a process-oriented assessment task may be more appropriate. 
On the other hand, if the objective is to evaluate learners' ability to apply knowledge and skills to a specific task, a product-oriented assessment task may be more appropriate. While the second classification of performance-based assessment can be represented into two main categories which are Restricted Response Performance-Based Assessment and Extended Response Performance-Based Assessment Restricted Response Performance-Based Assessment requires learners to complete a task within a specific framework and set of guidelines. The task may be limited in scope and require learners to provide a specific response or set of responses. This type of assessment typically measures learners' ability to recall and apply knowledge and skills in a specific context. Examples of restricted response performance-based assessment include multiple-choice questions, short-answer questions, and fill-in-the-blank exercises. Extended response performance-based assessment, on the other hand, requires learners to complete a more open-ended task that allows for multiple approaches and outcomes. The task may require learners to use critical thinking, problem-solving, and creativity to arrive at a solution. This type of assessment typically measures learners' ability to analyze, synthesize, and evaluate information and apply it in novel ways. Examples of extended response performance-based assessment include essays, research projects, and presentations. By classifying performance-based assessment into these two categories, educators can design assessment tasks that align with their learning objectives and evaluate learners' progress more effectively. For instance, if the learning objective is to assess learners' ability to recall and apply specific knowledge and skills, a restricted response performance-based assessment may be more appropriate. On the other hand, if the objective is to evaluate learners' ability to analyze and synthesize information and apply it in novel ways, an extended response performance-based assessment may be more appropriate. Now we have reached the assessment. Part 1. True or false with justification. 1. Performance-based assessment is only used for evaluating English language learners. 2. The focus of product-oriented performance-based assessment is on the learner's approach to the task rather than just the final product. 3. Feedback is provided to learners throughout the process in product-oriented performance-based assessment. 4. Restricted response performance-based assessment requires learners to complete a more open-ended task that allows for multiple approaches and outcomes. 5. Extended response performance-based assessment typically measures learners' ability to analyze, synthesize, and evaluate information, and apply it in novel ways. Part 2. Multiple Choice Questions 6. What is the main difference between process-oriented and product-oriented performance-based assessment? A. Process-oriented assessment focuses on the final product, while product-oriented assessment focuses on the learning process. B. Product-oriented assessment focuses on the final product, while process-oriented assessment focuses on the learning process. C. Process-oriented assessment and product-oriented assessment are the same. D. None of the above. 7. Which type of performance-based assessment measures learners' ability to recall and apply specific knowledge and skills in a specific context? A. Process-oriented assessment. B. Product-oriented assessment. C. Restricted response performance-based assessment. D. Extended response performance-based assessment. 8. Which type of performance-based assessment measures learners' ability to analyze, synthesize, and evaluate information and apply it in novel ways? A. Process-oriented assessment. B. Product-oriented assessment. C. Restricted response performance-based assessment. D. Extended response performance-based assessment. 9. Which type of performance-based assessment is more appropriate for evaluating learners' problem-solving skills? A. Process-oriented assessment. B. Product-oriented assessment. C. Restricted response performance-based assessment. D. Extended response performance-based assessment. 10. Which type of performance-based assessment is more appropriate for evaluating learners' ability to apply knowledge and skills to a specific task? A. Process-oriented assessment. B. Product-oriented assessment. C. Restricted response performance-based assessment. D. Extended response performance-based assessment. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you found it informative and enjoyable. If you liked what you saw, please consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribing to my channel for more content like this. Don't forget to hit the notification bell so you never miss an upload and as always feel free to leave a comment below with any questions or feedback. Until next time take care and stay tuned for more.